This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'm Brittany Saunders. And I'm alright, hey. And you have made your way onto our close friends list. You don't put the juiciest gossip on your main story, doll. You keep it for your close friends. And that's exactly what these episodes are for. Hey. (laughs) Sorry. How are you going? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I was going to... We we had some things we were going to talk about in the main show that I... This is why we've got close friends. So we can babble on Mm -hmm. and do whatever. And it's not very, like, professional, these episodes. No, I it's... I feel like we don't plan... If we don't plan much for the main episode, we don't plan anything for this one, okay? Exactly right. This is rogue. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's close friends, because, you know, we just go a bit rogue on close friends. Well, I do. I know you don't use it, but anyway. <laughs> um, we were talking about a couple things in the main show. One was Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour. You being cancelled. Oh, yeah. But we... we uh, And when this episode goes live, we'll be you going be... tonight. Yes! I'll be there. Tonight with you. Yes. And we'll be getting cancelled. So I can't <laughs> wait for that. <laughs> we have said that like we've never been cancelled before, so But you know what I want to do is something that I missed out on in Melbourne. What? And I think there's a few happening on Friday night. Yeah. It's a Taylor Swift club night where all they do is play Taylor Swift songs all night. Are you gonna go? Well, I saw it in Melbourne the next day. I saw it on the Saturday and we were leaving on the Sunday and I was like there's no way I can go out tonight. And I got invited to like Poof Doof was doing like a Taylor Swift night as well. Right. And I was like, oh, I would love. I know I'm not in my clubbing era. When was the last time you went clubbing, clubbing? Couldn't tell you. Yes. Like before COVID? Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't even know. Like when have I gone clubbing and gone out and gotten drunk and like stayed out really that? It would have been probably been before I got in a relationship. So over four and a half years ago. Wow. Since I've had an eye. And I'm stinging for it, if I'm honest. Are you? And I think that the one thing that would get me out is like the Taylor Swift uh, club night. And they were like, happening in Melbourne. I think they're happening in Sydney. So I want to say, will you come with me to that after the show on Friday? Yes, but can I sleep at your house? Yeah, for sure. I'm going to Jamboree on Saturday at like 8am. So you have to let yourself out. But, um... <laughs> what the fuck is Jamboree? What do you mean, what's Jamboree? Some kids play Playland? Kids Playland? You don't know what Jamboree is? No. You don't know. Blasphemy, love. You don't know what Jamboree is? It sounds like a megamania. My God. It's a water park. We used to go in school. Like, it's like wet and wild, but like better. Oh, see, I was all about Aussie bush camp. Jamboree, where you control the action. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. You not knowing what Jamboree is has hurt my soul. How am I supposed to know? I don't know. I'm from Newcastle. I don't know. I can't believe you don't know what Jamboree is. If you're from Newcastle and you're a scroller and you know what Jamboree is, can you message Brittany and say you're fucking dumb? Because (laughs) how do people not know what Jamboree is? Anyway, besides the point, I'm going to Jamboree on Saturday. Okay, I will come with you to the Taylor Swift party. Come with the Taylor Swift party. Will you also come to me with that lime wire party, please? Yes, when you messaged me. Did everyone see that? I posted. Actually, that would have been my raw flush one week. Yes. So in Sydney. They, I saw on the Burdekin story, which is like a club on Oxford Street, they have this LimeWire dance party night where apparently all the songs they play are from the LimeWire era. Remember, you down, you get all the viruses, the Trojan <laughs> horses would come onto your bloody computer, virus yes. out the wazoo, and um, we'd be down at music on demand. You download all the songs. In Beyonce's your, song, music on demand. Have them on your um, iPod shuffle and stuff. Anyway, they have this LimeWire dance party, right? And so I saw this, went on my story, was like, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm going. I've got, I bought tickets. Like, it's Did all you? happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you get yours? And we're all going together, please. Scrollers, let's all go. So we're going to the Taylor Swift after party. Yeah. And I've got to figure to... that one out. And okay. then the and LimeWire. Lime wire. It's March 30. And the best part about it is, did you see on the poster, it says 8 p.m. till late. A, a club, a nightclub that starts at 8 p.m. or whatever good. that is. I am so about that. Mm. I'm like, yes, because you know what? I can still be in bed in te- it, it, like still be in bed at 10.30 if it's not for me, given I haven't gone out and done, you know, clubbing. Drugs. <laughs> Time and that was place, a, that Brittany. That was a good Time opportunity for me to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was, come on. Also, you- <laughs> I reckon 
I would be a drug user. Like, if they didn't have those drug buses, I reckon I'd love to smoke weed. But you get caught, right? Like, you get because because you because uh, I drive everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I reckon if, if you couldn't, if, if they made, like, weed legal for... Do you think they will? I reckon they will. No, like, but if they made it legal is... to, like, drive and yeah. smoke weed, I don't know how that would work, obviously, because I don't even understand the whole concept of, like, being high and then how long it takes until you're not high till you can drive. Because yeah. I've heard that, like, with those drug buses, you can, like, smoke weed and then two days later it still is in your system. Right. Like, if that wasn't a thing... I would, I would so do drugs. Like, I'm sorry. I would so, I don't do drugs. I have no interest in drugs, but I would do drugs. Like, if that was the case, if they made it legal and I could, and there was some way to be like, you could tell like 12 hours later, you were able to drive. I would do drugs. Like, sorry. Is no one on the same page as me? Are we leaving this in? I mean, this is close friends. This is where I can say this sort of stuff. Yes, exactly. And like, I'm already cancelled for Taylor Swift, so I may as well just get it on the record. <laughs> I, if I was allowed to, I, I would, would do you? drugs. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> um, I would, like not the hard stuff. Like I'm not, you know, doing the real, real tough shit. I just mean like a bit of weed. I'd love that. Anyway. Brittany's just zoned out. Brittany's like, I'm, I'm not I'm looking here. for the photo of me at Groove in the Moo and I can't fucking find it. I've been looking for half an hour. Sorry, I'm just over here cosplaying as your housemate smoking <laughs> bongs with a glass house candle. You said on the main show mm-hmm. that we, you were going to tell us a story about Outdo being broken into this week. Yes. Well, take the floor, sister, because I'm over here waffling on about drugs. So please take the <laughs> microphone and dig me out of this hole. <laughs> so I said this in the last episode, but for those of you that don't know, AJ and I own a cafe slash coffee shop in Newcastle. Our cafe is underneath a residential like tower. You know how there's you've got your residential apartments and there's shops underneath? That's mm-hmm. where we are. And we've obviously made friends with a bunch of people that live above and there's this one guy that lives above and he owns a like wine cocktail bar like just down the road from us. Like this is a Wednesday night. AJ and I are dead asleep. It's about midnight and we get a call off the guy. And AJ didn't answer cuz he thought, "Why the fuck is he calling me at midnight? Like this is so weird." And so we he just didn't answer. And then the guy, whose name's Chris, I can say that, he texted AJ and just said like, "Hey mate, like I'm just walking home like from work cuz his bar closes late." And I saw that your cafe doors were wide open. And AJ's like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on there? Has someone forgot to shut them, like, when they close the cafe or whatever in the afternoon? And so we jumped onto the security cameras and had a look. And um, it was actually at, like, 9 p.m. that this guy broke into Outdo. Like, 9 o'clock, it's barely dark. Weird time. Um, so anyway, we've got really good cameras, luckily. So we just watched the whole thing. He like scaled because all of the walls at Outdo are like glass. Like you can see mm-hmm. out from every direction. And so he basically came up to the building. He had a backpack on and a hat and he like sussed out one side of the building and then went around to because there's two doors. He went around to like the main door and then was like, I don't know if he had like a device or something, but he was like fidgeting with the door for ages. And then for like a good, I don't know, it looks like 30 seconds, but it was probably quicker. He was like yanking at the door and then he eventually fully yanked it open and like broke the door in the process. Then he runs in around our counter straight to where the till is. And then it's just like, you can tell he's just freaking out and flustered. He's just ripping everything out. It's all falling onto the floor. And he's got the till, which I don't think he could have opened, but he's like got the till, put that under his arm. (laughs) Mind you, there's 50 bucks in there at most. Like there's no cash left in the till. Come on, mate. (laughs) Like 50 bucks. Uh, Then he was just scurrying around in that one area. In the video, you can see our iPad flies under his legs and goes behind him. So he fully didn't see that. There was laptops, everything in there, but all he got away with was the till. And then he then quickly hurries out and then we've got a drinks fridge like on the way out so he opens that pulls out a can of coke a can of orange juice and off he goes so all of that effort and all he got away with was less than 50 bucks a can of coke and orange juice 
And like, I didn't even know how to feel when this happened. So then AJ like rushed in there after we'd seen that footage, called the cops, the cops came, blah, blah, blah. They took the footage, this, that, and the other. Like the next morning, like the forensic people came to do the fingerprints and everything. And sadly, like this is something that happens all the time. Like you hear about businesses being broken into like all the time. I always hear about it. Um, and like there's nothing you can really do about it. It's just sad. And that night, like I was delirious because I was tired and I was kind of just laughing. But then I also felt bad because I think like it's absolutely fucked that people break into like, especially small businesses and like steal from them, like steal from the fucking corporate giants for all I care. But what is someone's life like that that is what they do? Mm. Like that's all I could think that night was like all for fucking 50 bucks and a can of Coke. Like what is someone's life like that where that's what they're doing at nine o'clock on a Wednesday night? You know? Not you feeling sorry for them. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. <laughs> Not like, you going, I've been broken into, but oh, like imagine being them. <laughs> that's what I was thinking though. Like it's one of Fair those enough. things for us like where we were just fucking laughing about it. Because if you don't laugh, you cry and there's mm. not much point because you can't do anything about it. Like it's been done. So we're just kind of laughing. I think like a cafe is also like a weird place to target. And now that I know where it's located, I'm also like, it's kind of out in the open. Yeah. I'm surprised no one saw. Like Like main road. Especially, yeah, where we are. Like people would have been out and about nine o'clock on a Wednesday night. That's student night in Newcastle. But I guess like the fact that it's a cafe, like in this day and age when cash really isn't something that many people use. Exactly. Like break into the bank instead. Well, that's what I mean. Like why, like what do you, uh, if there was no money in the till, what are you taking? Croissants. Like what's, what's in there yeah. of value? And our cafe is like tiny. It's like a little corner hole in the wall cafe. It's not like a big place. Yeah. But I was fucking freaking out when we were watching the footage because you can like fate is also in there. And that, that week was when we were setting up fate. Uh-huh. So he very well could have went next door instead. And not that there was like any money or anything in there either, but we'd spent days fucking setting up that store. Like he could have went in and fucked the place up or something. If you want to like pull all the racks, steal all the clothes. Mm-hmm. So I was really grateful that the person didn't go in there. And I was too scared to even say on my story, like, thank God he didn't go into fate. Cause I didn't want to like put that Manifest out there. Out. Yeah. But and you know what? Imagine if it, they did, like, you could just use that as content. content. <laughs> I know. I did Sorry, think- this is so bad, but, like, that's our life, people. Like, when scrollers, when I, something bad happens to me, I go, this is going to make a great fucking reel. <gasps> this is going to make a great story. Well, I did want to take the footage, because I ended up posting on my story, like, an hour after this happened, just saying, well, we just got broken into, and a lot of people were replying, saying, post the footage, post the footage. And part of me wanted to post it as a reel and put, like, that... Yes, that clown yes, song over the top yes. and make it be like POV you broke into a cafe and all you got was 20 bucks and a can of coke <laughs> like because that's hilarious yeah. but then again like I don't want to draw that kind of attention to my business no you know so that's yeah. why I didn't post about it and the police said that they'd be able to ID him off the video anyway well, you, saw, you sent the video to me yeah. and I had a look and I was like first of all <laughs> This is clearer than the Beyonce film I saw in Cinema's Love. Like yes. the the footage, I don't know what cameras you have, They're great. but you need to tell Nova to get them yes. because we need them. <laughs> we need them for our podcast. videos. They are, it's so crystal clear, and it's like in the night. It's night, and yeah. There's no lights on, and it's not like it's night vision, and it's still really good. crystal clear. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah, if he was in a police lineup, I'd be going. That's him. Yeah. It was so, and he didn't wear a mask. He didn't. No. He wore a hat, but it was backwards. I think. Yeah, like his face was on full display. Yeah. So it's then embarrassing. I... If I ever see him around, I'm going to fucking hit him. You reckon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why not? I hope you don't see him around then. <laughs> but you know what, though? Like, do you think he's been to Outdo before? I don't know. Like, what, who's randomly just picking out do? Sorry. I know. You're not that special. I know. Like, who's picking out do if, unless they've been there? Like, I'm like, has he been there before, scoped the place out? Because... Thought this looks nice. Like... Well, our house got broken into when I was younger. I've, we've only been broken into once, which is, like, it kind of scarred me for life. And, like, from now on, from everywhere else I've lived, I've needed, like, a lot of security. Mm. Which is why I also like living in apartments. It because, is like, safest. you can't get in unless you've got a pass and someone buzzes you up to the level. And then the only way into my apartment is through the front door, which is, like, you can't get into because yep. it's so um, secure. Yep. It's so, so strong. So, 
security is really important for me and that's because I got broken into when I was younger and it was quite, it's traumatising. Yeah, well, I was surprised by how many people replied to my stories saying like they'd been broken into and a lot of people replied to me saying they had been broken into their house when they were asleep. (gasps) See, that's... And that's what's sickening. Oh, that is so sickening. And I have a big fear of that. Yeah, right. Like, my thing is always like, AJ, you sleep on that side of the bed because if a robber comes in, you're getting murdered first. That is insane. (laughs) So, when we got broken into, we'd just gone to school. So, we'd just left. So, they... In the daytime? Yeah, they had scoped our house out. But the thing was, we randomly had new neighbours on both sides of us. Mm. So, both our neighbours had only just moved in. So, we hadn't, like, met them or known them or anything like that. And so, they didn't know whose cars were coming and going because they didn't know who we were. And so, we had left and then apparently a car pulled up into the driveway and then our neighbours at like, so school started at nine o'clock mm. and at about nine ten, um, the garage door was apparently like they heard so much banging on the garage door and like they kicked it in basically. But my neighbours were like, we just thought you were a really loud family because they hadn't met us yet. Is this at your dad's house? No, this is at my oh. childhood home. And then... Um, so we like access that house from inside the garage. So you go through the garage to get in and out. Mm. But because they kicked in the garage, they would have had to have scoped our house out first mm. because they wouldn't know to go through the garage. They would have tried to go through the front door. Like, how do they know that the garage connects to the house is what I'm saying. So then there's the sickening feeling as well that like they had been watching for God knows how long to mm. figure out to go through the garage. Cause that's not normal. You don't break into someone's house through the garage, right? Who knows the way Because what if you can't think. get through the garage to the house? Yeah, you've if there's just, no door inside. You've just broken in for no reason. So, yeah, it was really scary. And I still remember, like, it being such a weird day because we got picked up by my grandparents and they were like, you know, dad or mum usually picked us up at a certain time. And we were like, where are our parents? And then it was so devastating um, because the only thing that they took from my room was my fucking Nintendo DS and my Nintendogs game was in it. And I was like, are you fucking kidding? Like, I need to feed my dogs and take them for a walk so they can shit. You're not going to take care of my Nintendogs the way I could. And then I remember having to go through the whole insurance process was yeah. really weird to get all the things back. And I remember getting an Nintendo DS that wasn't the same as the one that I had. Mm. And I don't think I ever played the DS again. I was like, it's not the fucking same. I want my dogs back. Give me my dogs back. Well, I feel like that was a bit of a grim episode, Matt. That was weird, wasn't it? Yeah. But that's close friends. Sometimes it gets a little bit... Weird. Weird. And there's going to be much more of that every Friday from now on. Don't forget, we now upload every Tuesday and Friday. So make sure your notifications are on so you don't miss an episode. And also remember, this is Close Friends. We can talk about whatever we want on here. So if you want to send us anything, like we can get you scrollers involved. If you've got a story that you want us to share or something that you really want us to talk about, send it in because we can talk about absolutely anything on here and we can't ever get cancelled. And if you want to come on the show email us as well. Yeah, if um, you want to call in. If you've got nothing to do at about 11 o'clock on a Monday morning, we'd love to have a chat. Give us a call, please. Share your stories with us and everyone else. <laughs> well, anyway, love, see you next week. See you next Tuesday. Oh, I get to say that now. <laughs> oh, no, I could have always said that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and don't forget, what happens here in Close Friends stays in Close Friends. So please don't tell the coppers that I want to punch the guy that broke into Outdo. And don't tell them that I want to do drugs. (laughs) 